Hey, how's it going, guys? I'm John Ron. We're here reporting with She Got Game and Said by Woods. I'm here with the number nine player in the country and North Carolina State uh, University commit. So, Brooks, how's everything? And, you know, what's going on with you? Good, nothing much. How about you? Good, man. I'm good. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you could fit us in your busy schedule. Um, I know I just know how things are for you right now. So I appreciate you for coming on, to, you know, um, spend a few minutes with us. No, no problem. Yeah, so uh, you know, we're gonna kick this off. Usually, usually I like to peel it back layer by layer, like where you started and how you got into you know game of basketball and stuff. But you know, New Year, and we got we 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 got a pretty big we got a pretty big name for him to start this one off. So check this out. You know, um, from your memory, you know, what do you recall as your she got game moment? And here she got game is pretty much a moment where, you know, you've had a lot of moments in your career. You probably, you probably could peel back from and be like, yo, that's the moment I knew I could play. You know what I mean? A lot of us grow up and we're like, we kind of have that imposter syndrome where we know we're good. People have been telling us, but we don't really feel it. What was that moment in your career where you really knew, you know, okay, this is my she got game moment. I'm here. I'm arrived. I'm ready to do this. I'd say probably third grade when I was playing with the boys and I was the best player and I was dropping 30, 40 points against guys. So I think that was the moment I knew, like, I was going to be all right. Okay, okay. Um, third or fourth grade, were you playing against third or fourth grade boys or were you playing against, like, older? Yeah. Like, no, they were. Okay, okay. Um, we didn't have a girls team, so I had to play on the boys team. Gotcha. And you're still giving them buckets. And that's kind of yeah. gave you uh kind of gave you the confidence. All right. Um, you know, my next question, you know, while we understand who Zo Brooks is, you know, you're well established and we know a hundred percent what you're capable of on a, any given night. I kind of want to ask you, you know, looking back throughout your career, who would you say, you know, in your career was the hardest to guard? Uh definitely Juju. Okay. Okay. I Couple times in my life, uh, she that was the hardest person I'd say. Was it was it just her size or yeah. you know more of her size? Like there was like nothing I could really do when she raised up because she was so much taller than me. But that probably say her. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, for people at home, people may not know what the EYBL circle is. That's for people at home. It's pretty much the best circuit in in the country. And it's top notch competition on a consistent basis, right? Um, you know, who would you consider, you know, the toughest player you ever, you know, who excuse me, who's the toughest player who ever guarded you? Tough player who ever guarded me. I don't know. I play a lot of good kids. I don't know. That's a tough question. We know we know you get buckets. We know you get buckets. So, you know, I, I know I know it's someone out there who you definitely not uh, not shy away from. Let's not say that, but definitely, you know. Okay, I got to I got to get to my spots. You know, I can't play with this person. Nobody. No. Nah. I would try to save. <laughs> All right. So you just give buckets on everyone. I yeah. like. It. I like it. I like it. Um, you know. Furthermore, you know, uh, a new thing we're starting. I want to ask you. You know, through through your just career and just everyone you've seen play and played against, you know, uh, which player do you believe one is one of the most slept on players in the state? And then two, who, you know, who would you recommend is she got games next feature? Who do you, who do you personally believe deserves to be on she got game and deserves a feature next? Hmm. Maybe Tyana Bailey. I don't, I don't know on her, but Tiana, she's pretty good. Plays for Immaculate, Montclair. She she happened to be our first. She was our first. Yeah. She, was our yeah. first uh, she got game feature ever. Um, that's kind of funny you said that. Do you have a relationship yeah. with Tiana and stuff like that? Yeah, I know her. We played for a couple years on the Sparks and stuff like that. And we're cool. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Um, would you consider her one of the most slept on players in the state? Yeah, I definitely think she slept on in the country too. She's pretty good score, and you know I think they definitely sleep on her. I can respect that. I can respect that. Um, 
you know, so now now we kind of got those out the way, the room shakers a little bit. I want to I want to kind of tap into like how you just even began playing basketball and your background a little bit. All right. Um, just to kick it off, where are you initially from in New Jersey for people at home? Playing for New Jersey. You ain't County, stand up. What's up? Yeah. Yeah, what's up? What's up? That's great. Um, if you don't mind me asking, man, who who or what inspired you, you know, to pick up a basketball? Because a lot, you know, a lot of athletes they start, you know, they start soccer, they start with all these different sports. What specifically uh, you know, kind of drew you to basketball? Um, my older brother, Jalen, he been playing since he was young, since I was born, obviously. We're five years apart. And I've always had to go sit at his practices and when he would work out with my dad in the back. You know, as a little girl, I wanted to go hang out with my dad and brother and they were always playing basketball or football. So that's kind of what inspired me to play. I was just seeing him at practices and stuff. And I was like, I could do that too. And I would go run on the court and, you know, be in the way. And, but that's when I started. That's how I started playing. Would would you say would you say you got naturally better playing against Jalen? Did Jalen put you through the ringer a little bit? Yeah, because he's a boy and he's five years older, so obviously he's a lot stronger than me. So he was really physical and competitive. So yeah, I think that's why I, that's why I play the way I play. I like Had to, where I was gonna cry. Like it, I like it. Um, what would you say? You know, what would you say? What part of the game came the most natural to you? My handle. I think that was the first thing I was really like good at, just being able to dribble the ball. Mm, okay. But practicing to when I was younger, learning how to like do fancy moves and stuff like that. And I remember like he played hard defense on me, so I would have to figure out a way. And obviously I wasn't faster than him. I had to figure out a way to get by him. So I that's really how I learned how to dribble. Mm. Would you say would you say even at a young age? You know, I, I wouldn't say like a lot of people don't sleep on handles, but handle the craftiness of having the handles helps separate, you know, you from others. Like you may yeah. not you, you don't need to do a lot to get a lot of space. You know what I'm saying? And if you got if you know how to get to your spots with your handle, it just complements your game that much more. Right. Um, Having that at a young age, you know, w- would you say that that's helped elevate your game and help bring things, you know, to you naturally? Yeah, I'm I'm a point guard, so I just have to make plays for others. And, you know, people watch me and know I like to drive, so so they try and make it harder, and they press 94 feet a lot of times. And knowing that how you good you can dribble makes you confident and less nervous when you're getting pressed the whole game 94 feet. So I'm definitely confident. I think that my handle makes me more confident knowing that I can create for my teammates and get them open shots with my creativity. Absolutely. Um, you actually just mentioned that you you considered yourself a point guard, right? There's a lot of people, well, many people, not to pigeonhole you. You know, a lot of people <laughs> consider you a guard. However, some people consider you predominantly a scorer. Some yeah. consider you a facilitator. I wanted to ask you, you know, where do you find yourself the most comfortable on the court? Do you like the win? I'm sorry. When I have the ball in my hand, I think that's when I'm at my best because I can score. Pat, I, I think I control the offense pretty well. I don't let people speed me up. So I think sometimes people get confused with what a point guard really is. Like, obviously, anybody can bring up the ball, but a real point guard knows how to run the offense and is always in control. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Well, that, for the people at home that finally could, you know, be quiet, that's a point guard. It's a true point guard there. Um, yeah. You know, I, I kind of want to get into your coaching, right? Um, ultimately, you know, you proved at a young age you were exceptional. Uh, this isn't new, the coverage you're getting, and this isn't new. You, you, you've gotten a lot of love since you were younger. Um, you know, I like to fast forward a little bit to your high school career. You know, um, some, forget, some forget how important a relationship between you and the coach is, right, between a star player and a coach. I wanted to ask you, you know, um, at St. John Vianney, can you explain the unique relationship you have with head coach Don Carpenter? Yeah. Uh, you know, me and her get along well. I know that she believes in me, and sometimes it's hard for kids to fit in because they know that their coach doesn't believe in them. Mm-hmm. I know that when I'm messing up and struggling that 
she's not really going to yell at me and put me down, but she'll keep me in and wait for me to, you know, get going, tell me to slow down, try and help me out. So I think that relationship is pretty good. Mm. Would, would you say, would you say the relationship has helped you elevate your game to another level as far as yeah. coaching you and stuff like that? Um, Explain that. Yeah, she's a really good coach. So I know that I have to run her plays and her plays are designed for me to make good plays, like good passes, get look for open teammates like shooters or get into the big or just get me an open shot. Um, yeah. Gotcha. Um, understanding what coaching means to you, because you kind of just you kind of just went into, you know, how important that can be. Um, understanding, you know, what coaching means to you, you know, how much how much uh did being coached by Westmore at NC State play into you committing? He's a good coach. You know, I watch obviously you watch a lot of games before you just go and commit and of course, of course. Play. he like lets his point guards run the offense and it's free and that but like he doesn't try and, you know, control them, let them play their game. So I think I fell in love with that that part about his coaching ability. He lets the, his players be free. I was gonna say that sounds like that sounds like a big thing for you. Do you like do you like having the ability to be creative and kind of flow with the game, or do yeah. you like more structure in your game? And you're like, hey, I got to do A, B, C, and D, or do you just like more creativity and more avenues to do as you please? I like more creativity. You know, a play is. I think sometimes players become robotic trying to do the play right, but a play is just to help set you up to make something good happen. So if you have an open shot off of it, don't try and keep running the play around, you know, take the shot or look for the open teammate. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, you know, prior to your senior year, you were ranked within the top 50. As I just stated, you've been considered one of the best in the country. Um, however, this season you've been jumped up to top 10 in the country. Um, you know, nearly jumping 40 spots in one season is unreal. Um, you know, do do you ever or did you ever consider yourself an underdog at one point? Yeah, I've always considered myself that uh, underrated. But even now that I'm number nine in the country, it still doesn't matter to me. I still look at myself like as if I'm not ranked, uh, still work hard. So I have that same mindset and have a chip on my back. I was going to say, I, I could tell a lot uh, watching your films so or when you play. You play, you play as if you're like proving something, or you have something to prove. Is that is that safe to say? Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't matter if I was one or not ranked at all. Like I still have to go out there and play as hard as I can every time. Got you, got you. Um, what pre what type of preparation? You know, for people at home, for a lot of people look up to you. A lot of people love your game. You know, what preparation goes into being capable of jumping? 40 spots pretty much like what what did you do differently from past off season to this off season um nothing really not gonna lie I think they I just started going to more camps and I think they just kind of realized like you know but I don't think I did anything different I've been the same player my whole life you now obviously I got older and I slimmed out and everything got a little faster but my game hasn't changed gotcha gotcha so just pretty much the hard work paying off. Yeah. Gotcha. I love it. I love it. Um, You know, you play for a very talented team. St. John Vianney, you guys are located a little bit like Central Jersey. Um, yeah. But you play with a lot of talented players. And you guys are already ranked in the country. Recently, you guys are coming off a victory of knocking off the number one team in the country. Um, yeah. Long Island Luther. I wanted to ask you, you know, what did that mean to the team? And how much did that personally mean to you, especially feeling like the underdog and stuff coming into the season? Like how how much how much did that mean to you and how big was it for your team? Uh, as a team, I think we were all excited. That was the biggest game that we're probably going to play all year. And we work really hard in the gym and we get after it every day in practice. And, you know, it's, it's hard. It's not easy. So it was very important. And we were all excited after we won. And to me, I just – I know all those kids, you know, from AAU, you know, they play for – a lot of them play for Exodus, so I'm familiar with them. So it was kind of like an AAU game to me in a way, if that makes sense. So I just went out there and played my game, and we got out with the win. 
Absolutely. Um, your game is so unique. I I think personally, a lot of people find it captivating because you you're you're uniquely aggressive in spots. You're not aggressive all game, but you know when to put your head down. You know when okay, my team needs me. You know, you know how to choose your spots very very well. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you: Are, are there any WNBA or NBA players you like to model your game after, or you like to steal from, implement in yours? And if so, who are they? No, I don't really try and model my game after anybody. I just kind of play my game. But my favorite player is Kevin Durant. I don't think I play like him at all, but I just kind of play like myself. Gotcha. Okay, so you've never. That's actually pretty. That's pretty interesting. You've never looked at a player who was like, "Ooh, this crossover right here." Or you never, you know, nah, that never happened. Trainer Eric, his name's Eric Myrick, and he watches a lot of NBA players and tries to teach us their moves, mainly Kyrie and Michael Jordan. I know he likes to watch them a lot. And so he kind of takes their moves and has us do them in the gym. So I guess if you, if I had to model my game after somebody, it may be like a little bit of Kyrie because of how create, creative he is and how he gets his open shots and passes his teammates. And just just to clarify, uh, you said that was your trainer, Eric Myron. Yeah, I've been training with him since I was like, I don't know, fourth grade. I haven't ever trained with anybody else since. Oh wow! So you guys are like, you literally yeah. grow up. Yeah. Really? Like you know, go to multiple trains. I don't do that. I've only, I either train with my dad by myself or with him. Absolutely, absolutely tight circle, and you just grind up with the people you started with. I, I love it. Um, you know, as great as you are and as the peaks you, you know, you've reached immense peaks in your career and there's only so much more to go. Um, I want to ask you, you know, just like everyone else, you still have times where you have to persevere or you still have times of doubt where you're, you know, where you're going through a tough time and stuff like that. Is there any, is there ever like a saying or motto you like to go by when things are tough and stuff? Do you ever tell yourself things or stuff like that to get you through them? Uh, I'm a big believer in God, and whenever times get rough, I just pray extra. I pray every day, but when times I really need him, I pray a lot, and I watch church. I just think, and I pray. I have my rosary beads. I have my Bible in my bag, so I think I just look towards him more when I'm struggling. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, You know, with that being said, uh. Do you do you wish to be remembered? You know, like when when it's all said and done, the you know basketball is going to stop dribbling at one point. What does Zoe Brooks want her legacy to be left as as a basketball player? That's a hard question. It is. It is a loaded question. It is a loaded question. There's somebody who could do it all. A nice person on and off the court. I think that's why I want to be remembered as. Somebody who wasn't just like a good basketball player, but was always respectful and nice off the court, also. Okay. Um. Do you, do you if you don't mind me asking, do you ever do you wish to impact the youth at any given point, or you know, do you wish to like give back and stuff, or is you know, is that yeah? Not when a I, and I guess a little bit of money, I I would definitely give back. Yeah. No. I mean, a hundred percent, definitely funds, but uh, even. I'm talking about like just giving knowledge of the game, like a lot. Yeah, of I want to actually be a coach when I'm done. Oh, like really? Coach- yeah. Really? Okay. Do you have Do you have a favorite college? Did you have a favorite college growing up and stuff like that? I know I know you committed to NC State, so I'm not trying to get you in trouble. But uh, did you have a favorite college growing up or? No, I didn't really watch college basketball growing up. Uh, I just started when I obviously had to come down to picking colleges I started watching but when I was younger I didn't I can't recall like really watching college basketball gotcha gotcha you know so we we definitely broke down a lot of your game and a lot of stuff you do I want to talk about a little bit of life after basketball right um you know as we understand uh, we just spoke about the game of basketball will come to an eventually right um you know what do you hope to learn and utilize from a prestige from a excuse me from a prestigious university like NC State um, to further your career down the road. Say it one more time. What do you, What do you wish you know to utilize or learn from a, pre- a prestigious university like NC State um, to further your career down the line? Um, 
I just want to become a better person, a better basketball player. I'm really big on film also. Like, I like taking videos and taking pictures. So I hope that they could teach me a lot about technology and stuff like that. And I hope that they teach me a lot more about basketball. So hopefully one day I can be a good coach. Absolutely. You just want to grow as a player, grow. Just person. Knowledge. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, You know, for people at home, you know, a lot of people may not, may not really know who Zoe Brooks is. Right. I kind of want to know what are some of your like unknown hobbies or interests outside the, you know, the world of basketball. Cause Zoe Brooks is basketball, but then there's Zoe Brooks outside of basketball. Each person is their own individual outside the court. So, you know, what what are some of your other interests or hobbies off the court? Uh, I'm a big gamer. I like Fortnite. I play a lot of Fortnite. I obviously don't have that much time anymore as like I did when I was a little younger, but on my free time, I definitely play Fortnite a lot. And I like watching YouTube, just like stupid videos on YouTube, talking to my friends. I like shopping. I like sneakers. I'm kind of a little nerdy when it comes to technology. I like all that computer stuff. There's no so. wrong. No, don't don't let anyone ever make you feel, you know, uh, isolated or ostracized yeah, yeah. for liking technology, man. If that's what you do, yeah. that's what you like, embrace it. Um, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you, you know, with that being said, is there anything you personally like to do to kind of – to kind of lose time. Like a lot of people, like you said, you like to shop and stuff like that, but is there something personal that you like to do where like you just lose track of time? You It feels like you're doing it for five minutes and 10 hours go by. Is there something you really like to lock into? Playing video games, I start, I'll be three games in and then I'll be three, I'll be three hours in. It's weird. It seems like it goes by so fast. And obviously I can't really go to sleep at 4 a.m. like I used to when I was little, like sleep's important now, so. Gotcha. Yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, You know, just to conclude this interview a little bit, you know, is there any advice? Well, in conclusion, is there any advice, you know, you like to leave to any younger girls or boys that watch you or just any younger athletes in general, Um, you know, that resonate with your journey? Um. You're always going to have coaches that you're not going to like and not get along with, but don't ever let them tell you to be something that you're not. Don't ever try and change who you are for them. Always work hard, no matter what people say about you. You got to block it out. Obviously, it's hard when people constantly try and put you down, but you have to ignore it and just pray and just keep working hard until people notice Absolutely. That's amazing advice from Zoe Brooks, number nine player in the country, NC State commit. You were amazing. Um, and again, we understand your schedule is crazy. I'm very appreciative to, you know, take this time to chat with you. So thank you again for your time, Zoe, and I wish you all the best going forward. Thank you. Thanks, man.